Um, thank you, thank you, uh, TI Latvia, for inviting us on behalf of TI Slovenia and myself. So, um, as said, I am uh, actually not the project manager, I'm the legal officer. I was interim project manager for a while, so okay. Uh, uh, just a short introduction of our uh, office. We were founded, uh, well, in 2009, we were in our 10th anniversary year, basically, uh, when we became a fully accredited uh, member of TI in 2012. And uh, the one thing I would like to point out that we established in 2014 the ALAC, so Advocacy and Legal Advice Center, and I'm just stressing this because we actually included uh, this way of reporting suspicions of irregularities in public interest also in our IP model. So uh, we focus on transparency, integrity, and anti-corruption efforts. Uh, so I would just like to briefly give you some Slovenian countries context so you know our population is about 2 million which is similar to Latvia uh, our GDP nominal is 50 billion and we spent about 10 percent of that uh, in public procurement however the public trust in this is very low according to all Eurobarometers is always uh, really bad and there were many past cases in the period of transition uh, especially before the adaptation of Euro that uh, were uh, lots of projects were completely overspent uh, the building of highways was uh, 2 billion euro overspent, so that's a lot of money. And um, as you can see, the budgetary expenditure for public procurement, our budget is about 10 million, 52% uh, went for uh, in 2017, so that uh, is a quite a big proportion. And another aspect uh, of our public procurement system is the single bidding, which is uh, among the highest ones in Europe. So you see here 39% compared to EU average, uh, that is a problem. And the cost of corruption by uh, Study of Rent uh, Institute uh, said it at 3.5 billion euros. So those are like the basic facts of our country context. And uh, just uh, what uh, integrity Pact in Slovenia look like, uh, you heard all about the project, which is great because now I don't have to go into nitty gritty details. And uh, it was actually the first integrity pact signed in Slovenia, uh, I believe in visual presentation. So this is our former uh, president with the minister. And they, uh, we signed the pact in 2016 uh, and we, um, for monitoring public procurement procedures for energy renovations of general hospitals in Slovenia. We got the, that um, um, on tender, so we did not choose the project. Basically, we, we were chosen for that, and it's a great synergy because, as you heard, we have problems um, in, um, with alleged corruption in the health sector, but also the energy renovation for our future, for climate, is very important, and if you know that the hospitals are basically the biggest users of energy in public sector. They, they use vast amounts uh, of energy, so it was uh, for us, I think, a very nice project. And uh, our pact basically focuses on two things. One is to avoid all corruption, unethical behavior, and the other one is to provide us with all the information that we need to monitor the project. Uh, so we have a four team member and we uh, hired three exter external experts once we knew what field we were operating in. One is uh, an expert for energy renovations from University of Ljubljana, one is construction supervisor and one is a lawyer who she focuses solely on public procurements, really good expert, one of the top. So then we um, had to review the documentation. It was, uh, as Liene said, about 5,000 pages. You will see one photo um, confirming this. And, of course, uh, field monitoring is a very important aspect. Um, and also uh, on-site on coordination meetings with stakeholders where we get information. And also citizen engagement. So, uh, yeah, as you can see here, this was at the end of the project. All of these documentations is uh, pertaining to the project itself, and basically we reviewed it all with our experts. Um, so, uh, and another aspect is well, now actually, it's actually over 70 recommendations that we made to CA, some are key, and uh, mostly they are pertaining to increasing the level of competition uh, in the public procurements. We made two case studies. Uh, this one is about single bidding offers, and it's on a case of radars, of speed uh, radars uh, in Slovenia. Uh, so it was uh, quite nice, and the other one was uh, oh, oops, the investment in time of local elections, and we actually confirmed that in times in the year of local elections, the investments are going up, so they're politically motivated, which is, uh, yes, we, we thought it was and we confirmed it. So uh, how we do it, uh, 
we, we uh, apart from all the phases that Ivan already said, there are five phases. Uh, the one that we think is actually really important is also post-implementation after the works will be done to analyze the data on energy to see how much energy was actually saved and has the aim and the purpose of the public procurement as was specified in needs assessment was actually reached. So uh, we also uh, suggested to the CA to make a user organization, the hospital, to train all their staff so they will know how to monitor this this was uh, accepted recommendations, and we also informed the public on every phase of the public procurement through reports where we uh, basically we tell them what the risks are in this phase, how it was uh, executed, and uh, generally about procurement so the public can get some sort of like less technical, more pop version to, to bring uh, public procurement, which is a very technical area, closer to the public. So we're uh, making these reports and of course events. This is from uh, our conference in Ljubljana and we were really pleased because we got a room full of people basically from ministries, from all the governmental institutions and we, I think uh, it's safe to say we created kind of a buzz about integrity pacts. We've been invited to ministries to give additional explanations as soon we are talking about it, though the talks uh, are a bit stalled now because our government has fallen in between. So uh, this is, uh, we, we also gave the presentation at the forum for business people. They're also interested in these aspects. And uh, this is from a conference on the excellence and it's pertaining to medical field, so health. Again, uh, in Slovenia we have a lot of alleged cases of corruption, but they are rarely processed. So uh, this is our project. This is one landmark photograph you see. We put the huge visibility panel. This is over eight meters. Sorry, sorry, it's not possible to translate if you don't use a mic. Oh, and, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, uh, yeah, the, the, the banner on the balcony of this hospital says the world without corruption, which is our uh, hashtag. And uh, just to give you a lot, little bit of insight, this is a picture from 1925. So 95 years ago, this hospital was built. It's one of the 10 general hospitals in Slovenia, and it's the smallest one. But the area that is serving free municipalities, about 70,000 people, is a mining area, very important for them to have their own hospital, otherwise they would be forced to drive to other parts of Slovenia. Uh, so this is just to give you an overview how actually the construction went. This is the uh, result of the construction, and uh, this is the maternity ward. And I think uh, if you compare it to the first dilapidated orange facade, and this is also, of course, energy efficient, new uh, ventilation devices and stuff like that. And uh, one important aspect is also the solar electric plant on the roof of the building. And when I was there in August and everything was already working, at 9 o'clock in the morning, there was no current taken from the grid. Basically, the hospital was already producing enough energy to sustain itself, and they also have this uh, huge, uh, basically, to, to fill hot water to provide them in the days when the sun doesn't shine. So uh, the, the, the small building that you saw, it's only this central part. It's uh, basically, they just made it bigger with needs. So this is just to give you, uh, so when we, were, uh, when we knew that we were doing this hospital, um, we started making uh, local stakeholder mapping, who is important, who uses the hospital, the people of course, but also the police officers if they take somebody to take the blood because of alcohol, you know, lots of stakeholders, so we tried to get them and we made two events, one was the presentation, one was workshop at the People's University and we also had, uh, for, I gave two presentations for uh, employees of hospital on the mechanisms for reporting suspicions of irregularities. I will show you. We put these posters, and the poster says, have you noticed anything unusual? We didn't want to scare people with the word corruption. Have you noticed anything corrupt? We just wanted to know, if you notice anything unusual, please let us know. And they did, and though it was not like full-blown allegations of corruptions, there were useful information that we got that we otherwise wouldn't have received. So uh, this is uh, other citizens' outreach activities I will show you. This is again the poster and this is the way it was, uh, we put it on, this is waiting room in the hospital. We were hanging across all the hospital, but outside on the construction fences, we also put a lot of visibility materials so people knew that we were there. All the people walking by, not just the employees, the vendors, the suppliers, but normal citizens knew that something was going on. 
So, uh, of course, there's an aspect of cooperating with RCA, which only improved over time. Initially, there were some questions asked about our role, and Ivan, uh, he can confirm that uh, in Brussels we heard uh, uh, presentation from the, minister, the pre representative of ministry and she actually said the first time we were in the room on the meeting together said who are you and what do you want from me and we explained and from that on the cooperation just progressed throughout the implementation uh, we're uh, really transparent and communicating things uh, we have positive attitude towards joint work and learning and uh, this is also an important aspect that our team basically almost remained unchanged and the ministry team also remained unchanged so we, we could just uh, push on with the forward despite the fact that three ministers of health already changed in that period and now we're going to have a fourth one but the staff itself the civil servants they were unchanged so that is great for continuity so they accepted numerous recommendations as I said we gave 75 most of them non-key but some key and uh, we have already identified some systemic issues, not only pertaining to the Public Procurement Act, but also to Construction Act on the field of uh, infrastructure and such. So this is a, a photograph of our minister, the director of the hospital, three local mayors, and our um, project coordinator. I think it's a really good photo. We will, uh, I guess, use it in the future. And just to give you a view of how much this hospital means to local people, you know, all of these people came when the grand opening was, and basically you had these singing choirs of children playing instruments. So it was not like some sort of everyday occurrence. It was a big deal for these people. So what's next? The cooperation is still ongoing. The pact we signed applies to renovation of all general hospitals. We're going to do two. And it's already the second one on the way. We're mapping local stakeholders, already meeting them. And we're monitoring energy saving, savings in post-implementation phase. And of course, we're advocating the use of Integrity Pact in the future. And uh, we go around ministries. We are invited. I think uh, we have a genuine interest. So we're now waiting for a new government to continue with our advocacy. So just to give you, I will finish up with this. This is the new hospital that we're renovating. It's not as picturesque as the old one. It's actually quite ugly. But this is going to be new. And uh, this is the first meeting that we sat down with all the supervisors and the constructions, the representative of a user organization, the hospital and the ministry, and ourselves. This is already the construction board. It's already here with all the data. And uh, this is the last photo. So I was there uh, two days ago before I came here, and the bidder signed the pact. So this is great because we got the bidders from both procurement processes to sign the pact so it's now a really free party contract and this uh, orange fence just tells us this is opportunity for us to put on more visibility materials so people in Novo Mesto will know that something is happening we will also provide them with our internal mechanism uh, for reporting irregularities and basically we're just going to do do it again and get even more experience and we'll learn more lessons so thank you Thank you, Vasya.